This topic provides you with an overview of the procedures and steps used to set up, pay, and print W-2s for an employee that works in multiple states during the payroll year. Sage 50 makes it possible to pay an employee that works in more than one state during the payroll year. Setting up this type of employee in the program is a four-step process. You'll first create multiple employee records for the employee, and then you'll modify your state unemployment insurance formulas to work with all states. You can then pay the employee using multiple employee records so that the state withholding is deducted correctly for each state. And at the end of the year, you can print the employee's W-2. When set up correctly, the W-2 wizard will detect the employee's multiple records and will merge them together to be printed on one W-2. The first step in setting up a multiple state employee is to create multiple employee records that will be used to pay the one employee. Because only one state's withholdings can be properly tracked for each employee record you create, two employee records will be needed for this demonstration. Let's access the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window by selecting the Employees and Payroll Navigation Aid, clicking Employees, and then selecting New Employee. The first record you should create is the employee record that will be used to pay the employee for earnings worked in their home state. If you already have an employee record created for the employee, click List on the toolbar and select the employee record. In this example, Amanda Chester works in Georgia and South Carolina during the payroll year. The business is based in Georgia and Amanda's residence is in Georgia as well. One modification you should consider is changing the ID so that you can identify the state that is set up for the record. We'll click Change ID and change her employee ID for the record to HSTER-GA. The reason for this will become apparent in later steps. Once the home state record is created and saved, we can then use the record as a template to create a new record that will be used to pay Amanda for hours worked in South Carolina. With the home state employee record displayed, A in the employee ID field to SC. We'll do so right at the employee ID field. The change ID window will not be used. And then we'll click Save. Sage 50 will then automatically create a new employee record based on the original record's settings. If we click List again, We'll see that we now have two employee records for Amanda, HSTER-GA and HSTER-SC. The two records are identical except for the difference in record IDs and that the new SC record doesn't have a history of payroll transactions associated with it. It's important that the address and the Social Security number for each record remains identical to each other. The W-2 wizard will use the Social Security number to merge the records together when you print your W-2s. Now we'll need to modify the second state record so that it deducts South Carolina state withholdings correctly. We'll select the HSTER-C record, and with it displayed in the Maintain Employees and Sales Reps window, we'll select the Withholding Info tab. On this tab, We'll change the state abbreviation assigned to the state withholding details to SC. This setting tells Sage 50 to use the South Carolina State Income Tax Formula when the employee is paid using this employee record. If necessary, make sure that the filing status and other withholding details are modified to match the specific requirements for the additional state. Because we changed the state abbreviation to something other than the setting defined in employee defaults, we'll now need to change the settings for the company paid state unemployment formulas. Let's click the Company Fields tab. Notice that the state unemployment formula is listed as star star SUI ER. The two asterisks are wildcard characters that represent the state abbreviation we have just changed. Sage 50 uses these wildcards with all state and local taxes. For example, the program uses the wildcards for state income taxes as well. Because a SCSUIER formula doesn't exist in our system, we'll need to change the formula name to directly reference the GASUIER that is set up 
with the home state record. This step assumes that the employer should pay unemployment insurance tax to the state the company is based in for all of the hours worked by the employee, no matter what state the hours were worked in. If your situation is different, skip the next step and visit our knowledge base at sagekb.com to learn how to create an additional SUIER formula for the additional state. To modify the formula name, we'll uncheck the Use Defaults checkbox for SUIER. We'll click inside the formula field and using the drop down list, scroll down and select the GASUIER formula. Remember, the first two characters of the formula name represent the state that the formula is for. You may need to perform these same steps for other user maintained state formulas, such as the state administrative assessment tax formulas. Now we are finished setting up the new employee record for the additional state. We'll click Save and then close out of Maintain Employees and Sales Reps. Now before using the new record in Payroll, we need to modify the User Maintain State formulas so that they work with all states. Otherwise, we'll receive an error when paying the employee and the tax will not calculate. In the Employees and Payroll Navigation Center, Click Payroll Setup and then select Set Up Formulas Manually. The User Maintain Payroll Formulas window will display. From the Formula ID dropdown, we'll select GASUI space ER. The two digit number at the end of the formula name represents the current payroll year. With the formula selected, we'll and select All States as the setting. This tells Sage 50 that the formula can be used for all employer records, regardless of the state that is assigned to an employer record in the Withholding Info State field. Let's click Save to save our changes. We'll also modify the Georgia Administrative Assessment Tax Formula to work with all states as well. Let's close out of the Payroll Formulas window. Now the employee is configured in Sage 50 to be paid for work performed in two states. For example, suppose that during the current pay period, Amanda has worked 24 hours in Georgia and 16 hours in South Carolina. Two paychecks will need to be created to pay Amanda for the hours worked. Let's click the Pay Employees icon and then select Enter Payroll for one employee. This first check we'll create is for the hours Amanda worked in Georgia. We'll select the employee record HSTER-GA from the Employee ID lookup list. We'll then enter 24 hours in the Hours Worked field. Because this employee record is the original record for Amanda, the state deductions calculate based on the Georgia State Withholding Formula. Sage 50 knows that it should use the Georgia formula because of the GA abbreviation entered at the state field on the Withholding Info tab of the HSTER-GA employee record. Let's save this check to print later. Now we'll pay Amanda for hours worked in South Carolina. This time we'll bring up the HSTER-SC employee record. Let's enter 16 hours as the hours worked. This paycheck will deduct state withholdings based on the South Carolina state formula. Sage 50 knows that it should use the South Carolina formula because of the SC abbreviation entered at the state field on the Withholding Info tab of the HSTER-SC employee record. Now let's save this check to print later and close out of payroll entry. When you're printing W-2s at the end of the year, the program will detect that the employee has worked in multiple states and will give you the opportunity to merge the earnings recorded for the multiple employee records into one W-2. Let's walk through a demonstration. We'll click the Forms icon and then select Federal Forms. We'll leave Federal as the form type and select the W-2 from the available forms list. For this demonstration, we'll select a range of employee records. In the From box, we'll select A Chester GA, and in the To box, we'll select A Chester SC. Let's click OK to start the wizard. We'll walk through the wizard steps until we reach the State and Local Tax Items window. 
On this window, we'll need to update the tax ID numbers for the South Carolina taxes. The home state tax numbers are automatically entered based on the employer tax IDs defined in Maintain Company Information. Highlight a tax name in the list and click Edit to update the tax ID number. When finished, click Next. Now we'll walk through the rest of the wizard until we reach the list of W-2s that will be printed. On the list, notice that Amanda is listed twice. This is because two employee records were used to print her paychecks during the year. Also notice that the address and social security number information on both records are identical. Each line represents the earnings that Amanda earned in each state. Click Next Step and the program will prompt you that it has detected that Amanda's records share the same social security number. We'll click Yes to merge the duplicate records. The program will then merge the records into one row. Note that now the federal, Social Security, and Medicare wages and deductions have been totaled together as one amount. However, we can see that the state earnings and deductions are still listed separately for each state. Let's click Next Step. Now we can walk through the rest of the W-2 wizard and print Amanda's W-2s. Viewing the W-2, we can see that although boxes 1 through 6 represent earnings and deductions recorded for both of the employees' records, boxes 15 through 17 print each state's ID number, wages, and withholdings on a separate line. At this point, you can print multiple copies of the W-2 so that the employee sends a W-2 to each state. This concludes our look at processing payroll for an employee that works in multiple states. Thank you for taking this Anytime Learning topic. For information on additional training options available, visit us at sageu.com.